Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief Program. Today, we're diving into some fascinating stories that are making waves in the region. First up, Macau is taking a bold step in tackling food waste with a new recycling scheme, and most residents are on board to pay for better disposal facilities. Could Hong Kong learn a thing or two from its neighbor? Stay tuned as we explore this green initiative in detail. Next, we turn our attention to the real estate market. Hong Kong and mainland Chinese cities are facing a tough year ahead with high vacancy rates and falling office rents. We'll break down the numbers and discuss what this means for businesses and investors in the Asia-Pacific region. Lastly, let's indulge in a bit of luxury with French perfumer Henri Jacques' latest release. The collection de Laitlier features three exquisite rose-inspired scents, housed in opulent bottles. This limited-edition collection is a treat for the senses, and we can't wait to share more about it with you. Please stay tuned for the detailed coverage of these stories and more. South China Morning Post, Macau, with its dense population and massive influx of tourists, faces a significant challenge in managing its waste, particularly food waste which constitutes 40% of the total. The city's environmental report reveals that in 2022, each resident generated an average of 1.77 kilograms of waste daily. Addressing food waste is crucial, not only to reduce volume but also to mitigate methane emissions from landfills. Efforts in Macau include educating residents and businesses and implementing systems for organic waste processing. Chefs are increasingly mindful of ingredient sourcing, and AI is being utilized to optimize food use. A 2021 recycling project saw residents take food waste to be turned into fertilizer, raising awareness despite partial public adoption. A study highlighted that over 80% of residents view food waste as a serious issue, with many willing to pay for better waste management solutions. South China Morning Post, the office rental market in Hong Kong and mainland Chinese cities is experiencing a downturn, with high vacancy rates and declining rents, contrasting with the positive trends in Australian cities, Taipei, and Singapore. Knight Frank's study of 23 Asia-Pacific cities shows that Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Guangzhou saw rental declines of up to 11.1% year-on-year. Vacancy rates are high, with Shenzhen at 25.8% and Hong Kong at 16.6%. Despite this, Hong Kong remains the most expensive office market in the region. The conservative business outlook has led tenants to prioritize cost savings, further dampening demand. In contrast, Australian cities and Taipei are seeing rental growth due to strong market fundamentals. Overall, the region's prime office sector is expected to remain tenant-favorable into 2024, driven by the substantial new office space coming online, particularly in mainland China. South China Morning Post, the Henry Jacques Collection de Laitlier is a luxurious set of three fragrances centered around the exquisite H.J. Rose de Mai, harvested from the perfumer's own atelier in the south of France. This unique rose, discovered last spring, has inspired the creation of scents that capture its honeyed, herbal, and spicy essence. Rose Soleil blends clove, sandalwood, patchouli, and ilong ilong for a warm, spicy fragrance. Rose Trace Rose offers a deeply saturated, pure rose scent for true enthusiasts. Rose Aza combines dry woody notes and zest for a rich, complex aroma. These fragrances are presented in 30 ml artisanal carafes, housed in a handcrafted white chest with a plush pink interior, limited to just 500 sets. The collection epitomizes elegance and exclusivity, reflecting the fleeting beauty of the Rose de Mai. South China Morning Post. Messica, the illustrious French jewelry brand, has launched Midnight Sun 2, a collection that captures the essence of neo-1980s sensuality and punk rock attitude. 
Inspired by the enigmatic transition from night to dawn, the collection features dazzling pieces such as the white midnight sunset, which includes a semi-rigid collar necklace encrusted with over 2,400 stones and a 3.55-carat pear-shaped diamond at its center. The Lunar Diva Necklace, an all-white gold counterpart to the Solar Diva, boasts snow-set diamonds and a mesmerizing emerald-cut puzzle diamond. The groove set blends oversized, gender-neutral aesthetics with large interlocking chains of polished gold and diamond links. For those seeking to make a bold statement, Diamond Frequencies offers a multi-row choker, cuff bracelet, and tie necklace with cascading diamond lines, showcasing Messica's expertise in diamond setting and fluid design. South China Morning Post Enameling, a decorative art dating back to the 13th century BC, continues to captivate with its vibrant, glossy finishes. This ancient craft, involving melted powdered glass on metal, is favored for its grand foot technique, which involves multiple high-temperature firings. De Beers' Metamorphosis collection uses fiery red and orange enameling to enhance its autumn pieces, while Bucciolati's Opera Tool collection features enamel alongside agate and mother-of-pearl. Techniques like Champlev and Cloisonne offer high-contrast and intricate designs, as seen in Cartier's Panthère de Cartier collection. Swiss artist Anita Porchet's enamel miniature paintings are highly sought after by luxury watchmakers. Rolex's Oyster Perpetual Jigsaw Day Date 36 features a playful Champlev enamel puzzle dial. Van Cleef and Arpel's Lady Arpel's Jure Enchante watch showcases a new Facon enamel technique, creating three-dimensional forms and enhancing artistry with diamond settings, reflecting the Maison's commitment to preserving and evolving traditional techniques. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's Cash for Residency scheme has spurred local family office operators to launch a 100 million US dollar fund for capital investment migrants. Wings Capital, leading the initiative, aims to raise funds from applicants of the Capital Investment Entrance Scheme, CIES, to invest in private credit, promising returns over 10%. The scheme, requiring a minimum investment of 30 million Hong Kong dollars, has attracted hundreds of applicants, pooling over 10 billion Hong Kong dollars. Wings Capital will also collaborate with migration consultants to assist newcomers with property, schooling, and setting up family offices for succession planning and investments in art and wines. The initiative aligns with Chief Executive John Lee Kachiu's goal of establishing at least 200 large family offices in Hong Kong, leveraging the city's strategic position in the Greater Bay Area to attract wealthy individuals. South China Morning Post, Hong Kong sports potential faces significant hurdles due to a lack of adequate facilities, which hampers the development of world-class athletes. Despite a well-developed sports pyramid with the Hong Kong Sports Institute at its peak, the middle tier of competitive athletes is insufficiently supported. This middle group is crucial for nurturing elite athletes, but many sports associations lack dedicated training facilities and must compete with recreational users for public spaces. The government invests heavily in elite sports but fails to expand the high-performance base outside the institute. Clubs and groups of highly competitive athletes train independently, often without special venues, relying on social media for coordination. To improve, the government needs to invest in permanent training facilities for sports associations, enabling them to support the development of elite athletes more effectively. Such investment would lay a foundation for better performance in future Olympics beyond Paris 2024. South China Morning Post, Chinese restaurant chain Xiaokaiyuan International Holding has resubmitted its pre-listing documents to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange after its initial application lapsed. Founded in 2013 by Wang Shugao, Xiaokaiyuan operates over 600 restaurants across 135 cities in China, catering to the mass market with affordable dishes. The company plans to use the IPO proceeds, potentially up to $200 million, to expand its branch network. 
despite a 35% slump in new share listings in Hong Kong in the first half of 2024, Xia Kaiyuan's profitability and strong revenue growth make it a resilient candidate. The restaurant chain's application comes amid a challenging market environment, with many firms downgrading their outlook for the year. PwC expects about 80 companies to list in Hong Kong this year, raising 80 billion Hong Kong dollars, down from the previously anticipated 100 billion Hong Kong dollars. The biggest IPOs so far have come from the retail, consumer goods, and services sectors, with Sichuan Baicha Baidao Industrial leading the way. South China Morning Post, Deutsche Bank is focusing on the Asia-Pacific region to drive its core growth, aiming for it to contribute at least 15% of its global revenue in the coming years. CEO Christian Sewing, who has prioritized this region since taking the helm in 2018, highlights the significant growth potential in corporate banking, strategic investment advice, and private wealth management. The bank has invested heavily in these areas, particularly in the last 18 months, even as peers like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley have trimmed jobs. Deutsche Bank's headcount in Asia-Pacific increased by 16.6% to 27,095 in 2023. Recent senior hires include Deepak Dangbiak and Victor Jiang, reflecting the bank's commitment to strengthening its presence in the region. The private wealth management sector is also a key focus, with Hong Kong and mainland China offering promising opportunities due to their high concentration of millionaires. Deutsche Bank positions itself as a European alternative to local and U.S. banks, catering to clients seeking diversification in a complex geopolitical landscape. Guardian, Germany is set to significantly reduce its military aid to Ukraine in 2025, cutting it to 4 billion euros. This decision comes despite ongoing concerns about the stability of U.S. support for Ukraine. The German government is banking on a $50 billion loan from frozen Russian assets approved by the G7 to help Ukraine meet its military needs. German finance minister Christian Lindner assured that Ukraine's financing is secured for the foreseeable future. Meanwhile, Ukraine's defense minister Rustam Yumarov remains optimistic, stating that Ukraine will find ways to combat Russian forces regardless of U.S. political changes. Yumarov also criticized the Biden administration's restrictions on using U.S. weapons to strike Russian targets, arguing that Ukraine needs to hit military sites in Russia to protect its civilians. In other news, a Russian man, Maxim Marchenko, has been jailed in the U.S. for smuggling military-grade microelectronics to Russia, and Russia's foreign minister Sergei Lavrov expressed willingness to work with any U.S. leader ready for respectful dialogue, welcoming J.D. Vance's stance on cutting U.S. military support to Ukraine. South China Morning Post China's largest exchange-traded funds, ETFs, have seen substantial inflows, suggesting state-backed buying may be stabilizing market sentiment during the Communist Party's third plenum. The ETFs linked to the CSI 300 index, managed by firms like Huadai Pine Bridge Investments, eFund Management, and China Asset Management, have experienced above-average daily fund flows this week. This surge in interest is believed to be driven by state buyers, led by Central Huijin Investment, aiming to prop up market sentiment. The Central Committee's meeting in Beijing is expected to unveil social and economic development plans for the next five to ten years. State interventions in the stock market are common during major political events to create favorable investor sentiment. This week's inflows have helped the CSI 300 index rise by 0.8%, showing signs of stabilization after a significant decline earlier this year. Analysts believe that continued state buying will improve liquidity and bolster market sentiment. South China Morning Post, Kurt Tung, co-founder of Next Chapter LGBT, organized a groundbreaking event where 10 LGBTQ couples in Hong Kong were married via a live stream by an officiant in Utah, USA. This ceremony, part of Pride Month celebrations, was significant because it offered legally binding same-sex marriages to couples in Hong Kong, where gay marriage remains illegal. 
Tung, who faced challenges in her own marriage journey, established Next Chapter LGBT to help other LGBTQ couples navigate similar obstacles. The company has seen demand grow from 10 weddings a year to 100 and aims to expand services to mainland China. The June 25 ceremony was particularly special as it provided a low-cost option for couples who couldn't afford destination weddings. Despite Hong Kong's top court rejecting same-sex marriage in September 2023, the event marked progress for the city's LGBTQ community. The ceremony also highlighted shifting public opinion, with 60% of Hong Kong people now supporting same-sex marriage. The event was a celebration of love and a step towards greater acceptance and recognition of LGBTQ rights in Hong Kong. South China Morning Post Hong Kong is facing new challenges in maintaining its lead and offering exchange-traded funds, ETFs, that invest directly in Ether, the world's second-largest cryptocurrency token. With the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, giving preliminary approval for similar products in the U.S. market, Hong Kong's unique advantage may soon diminish. Despite this, Hong Kong continues to push forward in becoming a virtual asset hub by offering regulatory clarity and introducing spot crypto ETFs and proposed stablecoin regulations. Experts believe that U.S. spot Ether ETFs could increase investor awareness in Hong Kong and attract a specific set of investors who prefer products listed in the city. Factors such as regulatory developments, investor interest, and outcomes of crypto exchange inspections are considered more crucial to Hong Kong's digital asset sector than the launch of U.S. crypto ETFs. Al Jazeera Selena Chung, the new chair of the Hong Kong Journalists Association, HKJA, announced she lost her job at the Wall Street Journal after refusing to withdraw from the election for the leadership post. Chun believes her dismissal was linked to her supervisor's request to quit the association's board, which she refused. The Wall Street Journal cited restructuring as the reason for her job elimination but did not comment on individual cases. The incident highlights the shrinking space for press freedom in Hong Kong, especially since the introduction of a national security law in 2020. The HKJA has faced criticism from local authorities and pro-Beijing media, and Chang's firing raises concerns about the decline in media freedom. The Wall Street Journal's decision to shift its regional focus from Hong Kong to Singapore and the pressure on its employees to avoid advocating for press freedom further complicate the situation. South China Morning Post Despite a more optimistic economic outlook, Hong Kong retail investors remain hesitant to move out of cash, according to a survey by the Hong Kong Investment Funds Association, KIFA. Investors are waiting for interest rates to drop to 2.5% or below before reallocating from cash and deposits into investment products. The city's key lending rate is currently at 5.75%. While 55% of respondents have a positive outlook for the global economy and 52% for Hong Kong and mainland China, many still prioritize regular interest collection over capital growth. The survey, conducted by Nielsen IQ, found that Hong Kong investors have a strong home market bias, with 72% primarily interested in local investments and 63% in mainland China. The survey also revealed a preference for sectors like artificial intelligence, healthcare, green industries, and finance, despite the underperformance of funds focused on China and Hong Kong equities compared to other global markets. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. 
comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6DoBrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.